And now we go to another argument, so a geometric representation of complex numbers. And uh, the title of uh, the new section is uh, Gauss Argon Plane. So a geometric representation. of complex numbers. Hmm? So, so we can uh, try to visualize a bit this strange object and uh, which are named uh, in a still stranger way which is imaginary numbers. They require sort of imagination, basically. So, what is the plane of uh, Gauss and Argan? It is a plane, so it has uh, a horizontal axis where we are used to represent the real numbers, but there is another axis where we can... Uh, represent the imaginary numbers. No, there is a problem here. And, and this is really horrible. iPad is horrible. Never buy an iPad, remember. If you receive an iPad as a gift, and then you have to smile and to say thank you, but it is really an awful object. And so, here, in this plane, we can represent a, a complex number by imagining that, uh, by imagining that the real part is the horizontal coordinate x and the imaginary part is y. And then so we represent the real number with the point x plus i, y, but sometimes, or more often, I would say, the complex number is represented by the vector joining the origin with the point x, i, y. Okay. And uh, so, once we have uh, this, we can... Uh, represent uh, uh, graphically the sum, so representation of the sum and the, it is quite simple again use uh, the gauss argon plane. And here you have uh, to sum Z1 and Z2. So first you write here Z1. And then you have to add to X1 another X2, to Y1 another X2. And the easiest way to do that is to add the to immediately draw the Z2 here. And what you get here is nothing but the sum of the two. So this is Z1 plus Z2, which is X1 plus X2 plus I, Y1 plus Y2, okay? So you immediately see that this is nothing but the ordinary sum of two vectors. So for what concerns the sum, 
you immediately have the correspondence uh, between complex numbers that are vectors in the plane. The plane is named after the two mathematicians, Gauss and Argon. So, since uh, you can use this analogy between complex numbers and vectors, then you are somewhat forced to define what is the modulus of the vector. So, modulus, modulus of z of a complex number is equal to the modulus of the vector representing the complex number z. So the length of the line that joins the origin with the point that represents the complex number. So again, let us see what is the numerical value. Here we have z equal to x plus i y. So here you have x. Sorry, yeah, you have x. This height is y. So when you have uh, to compute the modulus of this vector, you have modulus of z to the square, by the Pythagorean theorem, you have, uh, this is x squared plus y squared. This is So, you have that the modulus of z is the square root, let me say the real square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so as an example, typical exercise <coughs> typical exercise is uh, compute the modulus of the complex number z equal for instance 3 minus 5i so modulus of z is equal to the square root to of the 3 to the square plus minus 5 to the square, and this is 9 plus 25, and this is square root of 34. Okay. And this is a, this is the result. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, Of course, uh, this is an important remark. And it is the following. In the Gauss-Argon plane, The real and imaginary part of uh, 
complex number. Play the role of the Cartesian coordinates. Of course, one can also use other coordinates. namely the polar ones. So let me just give you a box, which is an important box also in physics. It uh, will be useful and the box is polar coordinates in the plane. So when you are in the plane, here and here, and then uh, you have a complex number here. You can describe it here as Z is equal x plus i y but you can also single out the point here by its distance modulus of z from the origin and the angle theta that tells you the angle that you have to describe with the positive half line of the x-axis, or the positive x semi-axis, in order to reach the half line that joins 0 to z. Okay? So, the two new coordinates are modulus of z, which is in general called rho, which is uh, the distance from the origin 0 to x plus i y and theta which is the angle between the positive horizontal semi-axis and uh, the half line that joins the origin with z, okay? So rho theta are called the polar coordinates in the plane. Notice that whereas the Cartesian coordinates can vary along the whole real value, can run through the whole real axis, rho is non-negative and theta must be chosen in a certain range of um, you know, of width 2 pi and in general one chooses this 0 2 pi but sometimes it's more comfortable depending on the application you have in mind the computation you have to do or sometimes minus pi pi we will use the first in this lecture we will use this definition here but not always, it depends. So, and uh, what is very important are the formula 
that connects the polar coordinates and the Cartesian coordinates. Theta is called the argument. Hmm? Okay, the formulas are the following. Of course, x is equal to rho cos theta, you see here. This is rho cos theta equal to x. And y is rho sine theta. So we have uh, this other representation of, uh, of uh, the complex numbers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so any complex number z can be represented, so can be described as uh, z is equal to rho cos theta plus i rho sine theta. Hmm? And uh, uh, so a uh, uh, remark. Or we can have various remark. <clears throat> the first remark is what about uh, the complex conjugate? So you remember that z bar, complex conjugate, has the same real part of z, but has a change of sign in the imaginary part. So we can write it as rho cos theta plus i rho sine of minus theta. But cos theta is equal to cos of minus theta. So sine of minus theta. So, the argument of, so the angle of zeta bar is the argument of zeta with the other sign. So here you have this. This is zeta, and this is zeta bar. And uh, so this is the, the first remark. The second remark is the multiplication. Which is very important. The product of two complex numbers product of two
complex numbers in the Gauss argon plane. So here you use the polar representation. So zeta one is uh, rho one cosine theta one plus i rho two cosine theta two. Zeta two is rho two. Oh, sorry, sorry. Right. Sorry, rho one sine. Theta 1, you can also write it as rho 1 cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1. Rho 2 is cosine theta 2 plus i rho 2 sine theta 2. This is rho 2 cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. Now, Consider the product zeta one zeta two. This is rho one, rho two, and then the product of the real parts cosine zeta one, cosine zeta two, minus the product of the imaginary part sine zeta one, sine zeta two, plus i cosine zeta one sine theta 2 plus cosine theta 2 sine theta 1. Here it is quite important to remember the formula of sum of uh, the trigonometric function of two angles and so you immediately see that this is cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 and this is the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. Mm. And uh, so you see that uh, the modulus of zeta 1, zeta 2 is the product of the two moduli, while the argument, so the angle of zeta 1, zeta 2 is the sum of the two. This means that if you go to the Gauss Argon plane, You have to multiply zeta 1 here and zeta 2 here. Then zeta 1, zeta 2 will have a modulus which is the product of the two moduli and an angle, an argument which is the sum of the two. So, the multiplication implies a rotation, okay? If you want to rotate zeta 1 of an angle theta 2, you have to multiply it by a complex number with an argument equal to theta 2, okay? And uh, so this is uh, extremely important. And then uh, the last uh, thing I want, you, I want you to know is the following, is the exponential representation and uh, I have to ask you here a little bit of faith so trust me and uh, it is the following imagine that uh, for the function x sine and cosine, the Taylor expansion, so let me say the Maclaurin expansion, k 
can be extended up to infinitely many terms. So I want to tell you that this is true. This is absolutely true. I could prove it, but it would take some time. It is somewhat included in an exercise that I gave you about the Taylor expansion, asking you to see that the remainder of a Taylor expansion goes to zero as the expansion goes to possess infinitely many terms. And this is true. But time demanding to prove. However, you will see it in analysis two cause. Hmm? So I'm saying that, I'm saying that e to the power x can be written as the sum for j going, j going to plus infinity from 0 of x to the n divided by n factorial. Okay? Now, suppose to take x be an imaginary number. Okay? Again, this is legal, you can do it, but I cannot prove it here. And so you have e to the i theta is equal to sum for j going from 0 to plus infinity of i theta to the nth power divided by n. Uh, sorry, 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 this is not j, this is n. Hmm? n factorial. Okay, and uh, now split the sum, this infinite sum, in two terms, n even, i theta to the n divided by n factorial, plus n odd. What does it mean? For n even means that you have this k from 0 to plus infinity, i theta to the power 2k divided by 2k factorial, plus, again, k from 0 to plus infinity, i theta 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. Now, i to the power 2k is what? Is i to the power 2 to the power k. So it is minus 1 to the k. And consequently, i to the k plus 1 to the 2k plus 1 is equal to i minus 1 to the k. Then, e to the power e theta is equal to k from 0 to plus infinity minus 1 to the power k theta to the power 2k over 2k factorial plus i, because we get around this i here in the sum, infinite sum or series of the odd terms, and here you have k from 0 to plus infinity, minus 1 to the k, <clears throat> theta to the power 2k plus 1, divided to k plus 1 plus factorial. And these are the Taylor expansion of the 
cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So with this heuristic, we found the very important Euler's formula that says that the quantity, the exponential of the imaginary number i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. This is very important. So, we can represent any complex number z with modulus rho and argument theta as zeta equal to rho e to the e theta. And this representation is extremely comfortable if one aims at multiplying two complex numbers for instance by writing z1 z2 is equal to rho1 e to the i theta1 rho2 e to the i theta2 and then you write rho1 rho2 e to the i theta1 plus theta2 and you immediately see that the moduli multiply each other so while the arguments sum each other and this is the end okay and this will be extremely comfortable when we will uh, compute uh, the roots of uh, the entire roots uh, of complex numbers, which will be the next and last topics about complex numbers.